the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Prime Minister can't believe he's having to explain to the Leader of the NDP, talking down to a member of his own coalition government <laughs> just demonstrates how arrogant and out of touch this Prime Minister has become. Today, for example, he'll hop on his private jet and fly, fly off on vacation to hang out with the stars and give speeches, uh, self-important and self-indulgent speeches at Canadian taxpayers' expense, all the while he's putting in place a 41 cent a litre carbon tax that will cost the average family $1,500 more. Why doesn't he yeah. axe the trip? and ax the tax. Yeah, yeah. Honourable Prime Minister. $976, Mr. Speaker. That's what an average family of four in that member's riding uh, will be getting this year with the Climate Action Incentive. Uh, that's because not only are we moving forward uh, with a price on pollution that helps fight climate change, but uh, we're giving money back uh, to average families across the country uh, in jurisdictions where it applies that leave eight out of ten of them better off. This is how we both fight climate change and support families while, Mr. Speaker, drawing in global investments like Michelin, uh, like Volkswagen, like others who want to be part of Canadian workers' successes. So your plan is to um, tax us, give us a percentage back, give people that are homeless or the poor or something more of that tax back, bring in more people, more businesses that promote the uses, usage of oil and gas to fight climate change. When he said uh, 900 and something dollars, I thought for a moment that that was the price of his New York hotel room. I thought, no, that can't be true. It'll be in the thousands. But, but Mr. Speaker, he's spreading disinformation again. He promised he was going to censor misinformation. Why doesn't he censor himself? Because look at the information coming from the parliamentary budget officer he appointed, which demonstrates that the average Canadian will spend at least $1,500 more in taxes than they get back in rebates. The Liberals call this report a prop. It's from the parliamentary budget officer, the one they appointed. They're called facts. Will he finally listen to them? I feel like, like I'm explaining a lot today. If, if you're reading from something like I'm reading right now, it's something. It's, it's, a, re, it's a resource. It's a source. If I hold it up like this, it's a prop. And nobody wants to hold up a prop. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I can tell you he wasn't reading from the PBO report because the PBO report has actually decried uh, the fact uh, that it is being misinterpreted deliberately, indeed, by the Conservatives. The reality is, and the report is very clear, eight out of ten families in jurisdictions where the price on pollution applies do better with this price on pollution. But what the Leader of the Opposition doesn't want... You don't have a plan either. Your, it uh, seems like your plan is to tax us, uh, like up the ass, and then give us a percentage of that tax back, and then the rest is going to what? Like, I don't understand. It's not going to create jobs for Canadians, not create growth for the economy, and not leave Canadians better off in the coming years. That's the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, it's now clear why he wants to censor the internet, Mr. Speaker. He doesn't want Canadians to go and find out which of us is telling the truth. Yeah. It would be very easy for them. I encourage them to Google a distributional analysis of the federal fuel charge on the 2030 Emissions Reduction Plan. Page 3. If you're out there watching, Google it now. You will see the Prime Minister is deliberately misinforming the House of Commons by stating that Canadians will be better off when clearly the average household will pay more than $1,500 more in taxes yep. than they get back. Would the Prime Minister like me to have one of the pages send this document over so that he can read it? Honourable, the Right Honourable Leader, the, uh, sorry, the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Conservative this government would still choose the Conservative opposition. You could do so. You, you do. You could. You, you want. You want. What the fuck are you talking about? I, I, 
I want to remind the honourable members to maybe take direction from their whip. Just look at her or him. I mean, like you know, but and just listen. You're good. Okay, I got your word for it. Good. I'll take their word for it. The right honourable prime minister from the top, Mr. Speaker, the Conservative Party of Canada continues to refuse to understand that you cannot have a plan for the future of the economy if you do not have a plan to fight climate change. Uh, they are continuing uh, to choose uh, to mislead Canadians, to confuse the issue, uh, and uh, to harm workers across this country. If Volkswagen chose to come to invest in Canada, if Rio Tinto is making investments in Canada... And another thing, these, these big corporations to get us jobs and everything um, that's cool and all, awesome, but the thing is, is that we have other jobs that we need to secure, like the strike that you're, that is currently going on right now, and the fact that we can create more jobs by, uh, taking out these, uh, policies that uh, prevent uh, carpenters and construction workers from creating houses. Canada. If uh, ArcelorMittal is investing in Hamilton, these are things that are happening because of the leadership Canadians, Canadian government, Canadian workers are showing in tackling climate change and building a stronger future. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, he does not have an environmental plan. He has a tax plan. Since he brought in the carbon tax, he has not succeeded in reaching a single solitary emissions reduction target. That is because taxing people for something they have no choice but to use does not change the environment, Mr. Speaker. Canadians have to drive. They have to heat their homes. But this Prime Minister chooses to put the burden on the working class, 60 per cent of whom will pay more in taxes than they get back in rebates, instead of putting it on himself. Why doesn't he, he cancel his hypocritical, high-flying lifestyle and the tax at the same time? Yeah.